Hello and welcome! My name is Karen Dunn and I'm going to today, just today, starting today, start a whole new series of videos because I need something to shift me out of this funky space that I have been in. So I am calling this series the raw art journaling because if we don't get raw about this stuff I think there's something that we're missing. So <laughs> I'm just going to dive right in and we'll just see how it goes. So what I'm working in here is actually a page from a book that I took apart and deconstructed. It's part of a, another series that I'm working on. Um, and so I've been working in this format for a while and I really love it. Uh, this book's got got pretty heavy paper in it and the images in here are, are just fabulous. They're, um, there's something that, you know, you can really interpret on your own. So um, I almost, some of these images on this page are so powerful that I don't want to cover them up. And other ones, I, I'm just like, eh. Okay, so that's where I'm going to start. I'm going to start by covering some things up. And for this, I am just going to use some inexpensive craft paint, some white paint to cover it up. Yes, I could use gesso, but you know, I'm quickly, or is it rather slowly, starting to realize that gesso, which is what I would normally use to do this, it takes a while to dry and you know when I'm on a roll I just don't have the patience for that so I'm just going to use this inexpensive craft paint and cover up some of these images that I'm really not interested in having on my page. Now of course if you are working on a blank page you probably won't have to do this. But, you know, working in altered books, um, repurposed books, is a really amazing experience. And I started doing this deconstructing um, process where I actually took apart the book. And, um, and then later I can bind it back together in whatever form comes up for me. Okay, I'm going to set this side to dry. It's not going to take very long. It's practically dry already. Which is why I'm really quickly starting to really love just working with craft paint. And so now I have a whole bunch of magazine images. And these are ones that I've already um, kind of cut out from a magazine. But they're, they're actually leftovers. So... I'm going to really feel into my energy right now. This, this, this thing of, you know, of planning and letting go and then disappointment and, and too much and editing and all of this, this stuff, this, this energy that is just riding me. I am going to just intuitively feel into this. Let that energy be. I'm not going to try to change it. I want to explore it. So I'm going to be picking out images that really come out for me. Like this one. This is a, uh, a boot. Yeah, seriously, you know. I got to give this stuff the boot. So I'm going to grab that image. And this one, you know, overthinking it. This just makes me think of, you know, just just thinking about things. Ah! Well, let's see. What does this say? What's left of what this says? I am just a shadow of a shadow of a shadow. Trying. This is interesting because I cut, uh, I cut something out of this and and now there's like this, this space where I can, you know, maybe put in my own thing. So I really like that. So I think I'm going to go ahead and cut this out. Okay. 
You know, this is this kind of this is an interesting image that reminds me of that uh, the shadow of the shadow. So this is kind of interesting. Now at this point, realize that I have no idea what I'm doing. Not a clue. I am just taking images, cutting them or tearing them. Kind of like taking this pile of images and, and refining it a little bit more. Refining it down to something that's reflective of what I'm experiencing right now. Oh, this is a great image. It's like she's got this huge weight on her head. It's like she's carrying this whole, this building and it's like, oh my God, how much, how much can I possibly balance on my head? Ah. Now keep in mind, I have no idea where I'm going with this. I love working this way. It's a very, very freeing experience. Okay, so I have enough images. Yes, I want to keep doing more images, but at some point, you just have to say enough is enough. All right, let's get my page back out. Now, you know, there was actually something really interesting that I just did because I set this aside I, and I picked images. So I wasn't looking at this while I was picking out images. So it's going to be interesting to see which images at, fit into this. Who knows? Maybe I can get them all in there. I really, really, really encourage you to work in this way where you just, you don't know where it's going. You're letting go of trying to make it go in any particular direction. And it's more like you're curious to see what would happen if I did this. Now I'm refining my images a little bit more, cutting away the parts that don't really resonate with me. What's really interesting about the magazine that I'm using is all of the images in this magazine were either drawn by the artist or were um, images from magazines or photos um, that they had prints of. So it's kind of, it's, it's this really interesting um, collaboration. Collaborating in, with, with layers of collaborators. If that's a word. Get that guy out of there. Yeah, I don't know on this um, on this little word piece here if I will try to fill that in. Um, we'll see. Sometimes it's really interesting to see what happens when you leave pieces out. Like it's going to be really obvious to someone that that reads this, that there's something missing. So maybe it's not for me to fill in um, 
I am just a shadow of a shadow of a shadow trying, you know, maybe leave that, you know, um, give, give people space to, I'm going to actually create a space right there, a space for people to see what's there for them. If you're wondering where I got these in really fabulous images, these are from the Art Journaling Magazine by Somerset Studio, which I heard sometime last year they were going to stop publishing it. Um, so you might have a little harder time finding it. I pick up mine at uh, used bookstores and craft stores. Okay, so I have um, I have some images here. I have no idea how these all go together, but my next step is to start gluing them down, regardless of not knowing where it's going. Okay, for that I'm going to use Mod Podge. The, another uh, another really nice thing about these um, magazines is the pages are nice and uh, are nice and thick they're heavy pages so um, the they don't tend to wrinkle like the thinner magazines would so I'm putting my matte medium underneath as well as on top to kind of seal that in. It also can, it also um, helps to smooth it out. But I also like to use my brayer for smoothing things out too if it starts to get a little too, if I start to see some air bubbles underneath there I might grab my brayer Okay, now that that's done, I am going to add some texture to the page with some paint. And this is what I like to think of as my time to kind of um, marinate what I've put down. So I had a burst of emotions and then I whited out, a, you know, bunch of stuff on the page, push that all to the background, bringing things forward. I grabbed um, images in a very intuitive way, just feeling into it. And then I trimmed those down to kind of further narrow things, narrowing the focus. And now I'm going to spend some time just having a little bit of free play with some, some paints and let it kind of sink in a little deeper.
All right, things are happening. I got my feelings out there. I got some images to kind of run with. And I put down some texture and some backgrounds. And now it's it's really starting to feel like it's coming together. But it there's still everything still feels separated. So one of the, one of the things that um, I love to do after this stage is to start working with some of my nicer paints. Now I have been just using the inexpensive craft paints and these are all matte finish which tend to leave a very dull page and I like to bring them out by using these um, fluid acrylics and I have a couple of different brands here that I, I absolutely love. I don't even know if you can get this one anymore, the Deco Art uh, Media Fluid Acrylics. You can definitely get the Golden Acrylics, but these are about half the price. So I really, um, these are my, my favorite go-tos. What is really different about these paints is the transparency. They are very transparent except for some colors are just naturally opaque. Um, the And these are more of your earth colors, your um, your ochre, your burnt zenia, um, uh, raw umber. These are all going to be much much more opaque and giving um, coverage. But most of these um, most of them are going to be very transparent. So I am going to um, just start to kind of put down a few layers of this paint and I'm going to be using a, uh, a gloss glazing liquid to do so. This is going to help me to thin out the paint even more and um, the, the the glazing liquid is going to give my colors some the, a, a little less dull and then these really nice vibrant paints are going to make it just shine out. Anyway, I'll stop talking and just start, start doing this thing. <laughs> Now you can already see that the color that I put down is really starting to make this page pop. And this that I just put down is not what you might think. It is not a yellow. It is one of my favorites. It's gold green or green gold. Depending on which brand you buy, they'll, they'll be different. They'll come by different names. <laughs> And don't worry about getting, getting messy. Get messy. That's what this whole process is about. It's about getting messy and just going with whatever feels like wants to happen next. Allow that to happen. Let that out on your page. Stop trying to control everything. Trust. Trust. Oh my God, trust. Don't get me started on trust. Trust is huge. And trust isn't something that you do once. Trust is an ongoing commitment. You have to like wake up. And we do. We, we do this. We do it naturally. We wake up every day and we trust. If we didn't trust... We would never even get out of bed. 
I mean, really, we really, really wouldn't get out of bed. And you might have those days where you're like, yeah, but I just want to hang out in bed, Karen. And you know, that's okay too. As long as you eventually, you know, get up and get back out into the world. Because that's where it's happening. And I'm really reminded of that as I'm painting around this head fi figure that I put on my page to represent all of this heady work that I do. And I am, I get so caught up in my head. I mean, to the point, it's just, it can be ridiculous. I have a very strong thinking type in my personality. I'm a big thinker. Love to think. Sometimes to my own detriment. But I think that's part of the balance, what I am learning to do in this lifetime is to balance these these energies. One of the things you probably noticed as I'm going along working on this is I am working with a lot of different brushes. I actually have um, several different containers like this of brushes and um, some of them I use for specific paints and other ones they're just kind of like my free-for-all. Different brushes feel differently. Um, like I have some I have some really high quality brushes that are just nice and smooth and just wonderful to work with. And then I have um, other ones that are more rough around the edges and a little bit stiffer or they have, um, you know, fanned out because I haven't taken very good care of my brushes. And then um, other ones um, are, you know, rough. And every time you, you use a different tool on your surface, it's going to bring up another emotion. And so I really like having a wide variety of paints and tools to put that paint down because it allows me to feel things in different ways. Okay, now it's time to bring out a little bit more of the imagery in here and um, do a little bit of uh, drawing with paint. And I have a little mixture here of a glazing liquid and just a cheap acrylic paint. I'm going to see how I like this. I usually um, use something like um, the acrylic inks or the um, fluid acrylics. But I really want to try this other um, method because I have a lot of white craft paint and um, quite a bit of this glazing liquid. Um, the glazing liquid as opposed to the glazing medium, this actually has a, um, a paint drying retardant in it. So it'll, it'll take longer to dry, which gives you a lot more playtime on your canvas. Now, if you want something that's going to be more quick drying, just go for the, um, the, the glazing medium. I know they sound the same, but they're just not. <laughs>
Well, that did not turn out at all like I thought it would. I originally started off with a thinner paintbrush where I was going to do some drawing, but then um, my paint was just too thin and too, um, too transparent to really draw lines. So I ended up doing um, some, some shading which is a very interesting, it really kind of brought this, this some new dynamics to this page spread. So, you know, don't be afraid to, you know, when you start doing something, um, to have it shift and morph into something else, because maybe something else is wanting to, to come out and play on your page. And if you can make room for that and set aside what you think needs to happen, some some really interesting, almost magical things can come out. I've let this dry a little bit and now I'm going to put on a layer of matte medium um, on top of this just to kind of level things out. And um, I know that, you know, I put down some glazing medium that was glossy, but um, and some of it showed through, but I can always bring back that gloss later. I really just kind of want to get on a layer of, um, of this matte medium to, to seal it in. And then I can do some pen work on top of it and really bring things out. Maybe do some, some journal writing and see what, what comes from that. Now this next process that I'm going to do, I will do this off camera so you'll um, you will get to see the progression of the steps, but it's work that I do at different times of the day. And um, like I will have this sitting next to me and I might be watching a show or listening uh, to a book on tape and things will start to come up for me. So I will um, grab my little page spread and, and my, I might just do some doodles on it. I might do some writing on it. I might start bringing out some of the imagery that's already on the page, bringing it forward. Or I may um, change some of the imagery on the page and transform it using um, using different shapes and drawings. And, and, and I primarily do work with pens at this stage, although I might use like a, a brush pen like this if I want to do something a little bit looser. And these brush pens are just, are, they're fabulous. Um, and a lot of them come in permanent ink. But uh, you know you'll want to you'll want to test that before you um, do anything more. If you plan on putting another layer of wet on here, which at this point I don't expect to. I think that I'm all done with the wet stages. I'm all done with the the, the this collage imagery, uh, putting things down, getting getting the playing field out there. Now it's I'll be curious to see what more comes from this. This is the stage that I, I really love to dive into.